Uh, I'm very happy to see you again. It's our second seminar for badminton coaches. Today we will speak about more about uh, badminton doubles. Uh, in a start, I want so, to. So I want so to thank you. Yeah, I want to thank you uh, also, coaches from Asia and Indonesia and Africa and Europe and uh, any, uh, so many countries, also Latvia. I'm happy about our coaches as well. So please turn off your microphones and video till you start to discuss with our speakers. And uh, now I want to ask first of our speakers, Martin, his second time leading our seminar. So Martin, the floor is yours. OK, thank you, uh, Christians. And uh, welcome to uh, everybody um, uh, sharing this, uh, this seminar on, uh, on badminton doubles. Um, I think it's a great initiative from Christians from Lettland to do this. Uh, we had a lot of uh, response on the seminar last week. And uh, today, hopefully, uh, you enjoyed this one as well. I'm not doing this uh, on my own. Today, we also have um, uh, a company speaker from uh, Poland, Wojciech uh, Skolacic will speak. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, I think most of you will know him. He, is, uh, he was in the past uh, one of the best uh, double players in Europe. So he will talk about uh, badminton doubles as well. And we also have uh, Nissan Kautekar from uh, India, but he is a coach working in uh, Norway at the moment. And uh, he will speak uh, a little bit about uh, the difference between Asian and European double. Uh, for the start, um, it's me again, like uh, last week, uh, badminton doubles. And um, first, I think uh, we need to look at, uh, at doubles in, uh, in a couple of uh, aspects. First of all, I think we should do some analysis of badminton doubles and think what are the uh, special characteristics uh, of doubles. I think we need to talk about uh, when we start, how to start. And at least I will tell you a little bit uh, about the um, uh, basic tactics in, in service situation. Um, I think with the uh, Wojciech Skolacic uh, uh, level, level. level uh, player in, in doubles uh, a few years ago, I think uh, for him it would be uh, very nice uh, to explain more uh, tactics on advanced level. And this is what we uh, what we always think and what we always hear. Huh? Um, most of the time, uh, singles are the most important part uh, of people are seeing singles as the most important uh, event in, in, in badminton. And uh, so all players uh, will start with, with singles. And if they are not good enough, then you can always play doubles. And I think that's completely wrong. And I hope you think exactly the same. But if we look to the characteristics of doubles and we compare that uh, with, with singles, then we see, uh, I think, four uh, important factors. First of all, doubles is, compared to singles, more explosive. More explosive in the legs, but also in the arms. You have to play fast and hard, mainly, not always, of course. The second uh, characteristic of, uh, of doubles is that you have less space than in singles, less space to move for yourself because you're with two on a court and less space to play the shuttle in, um, in relation, of course, to your partner and to your opponent, uh, you're with two on the same side. So the area you can move is a little bit smaller, but also the area where you can play the shuttle is not that big as in singles. The third factor I think what's really important in doubles is split second handling. Uh, you have to decide uh, in a split second what you're going to do and even faster than in singles. So the pressure 
in time is far more bigger than in singles. Of course, it has to do with the fact that in doubles, we are playing, we are playing mainly fast and harder than in singles. And then the last part, I think that's really, really important. You must be able to cooperate. You must be able to do things together on court. And that's why I think playing doubles is really a specialism. And it's not exactly not the same as, uh, as singles. Of course, it's not the same as singles, but it also uh, needs uh, complete different skills from singles as well. And I think in this in this card, uh, I have um, uh, tried to, to explain the, the different uh, skills in doubles. And as usual, huh, we, we divide skills in technical, tactical, physical, and mental skills. But if you look at doubles, then I think on number one, in technical way, it's racket handling. That's the most important part uh, for doubles. Uh, I'll explain that you, to you later what I mean with racket handling. But for me, that's the real issue of playing doubles. Then it's the service situation. And of course, we will end with attacking stroke, <clears throat> defensive strokes and net strokes. And <clears throat> we were talking about the fact that playing doubles is hard and fast, but as you can see, and I think you see that as well in, in court, on every level, players should also be able to play in a soft way and with a lot of touch. Then I think in a tactical way, the skills you need to have is at least to play down as much as possible. Play what I call inside outside on the same opponent. So play first on the left side, then on the right side or the other way around. I think you should be able to play in the free space. And we saw already that you have less space uh, in doubles because there are two opponents. So it's difficult, more difficult to find the free space in doubles as well. And you have to have the skill, you must have the skill to play on the body of your opponent, of course. Physical. Yes, there is, um, there is a difference between singles. I think in doubles, strength endurance is more important than in singles, especially for the legs. Uh, you know that, uh, especially in men's doubles, you have to jump a lot, but we see nowadays also in, in women's doubles that uh, they will start to jump. And you have to do that not only one game, you have to do that three games in a row. And sometimes those doubles uh, are going for an hour and more. Then, of course, you need aerobic capacity, but also a big deal of anaerobic capacity because of the speed and the pace of the rallies. You have to move in a fast way on a short distance. It's not the long diagonal from one corner in the back to one corner in the front. It's just on half court, moving fast in a short distance. So starting, accelerating and decelerating is probably even more important in doubles than in singles. Mentally, I think it's very, very difficult. First of all, um, you need to have the skill to cooperate. Uh, badminton is what we call an individual sport, and in singles, it's really an individual sport. But a cooperation is needed in, um, in doubles to go for the best results. And then there's also something like winning and losing. When you are on your own in singles, the only one who is failing is you. 
the only one who is winning is you. In doubles, you're always together. You can play yourself very good or very bad. And your partner can play very bad and you are playing very good. Or he, your apartment is playing very, very good and you are playing very bad. And that's a complete different situation than in singles. Also, in doubles, in cooperation, somebody should take the lead and somebody should follow. I'm not saying that in every situation and in all doubles, it's always the same uh, player who is leading and who is following. Of course, that can change. But what I see over the years, when I was coaching doubles, most of the time, one of the players in the team was leading and the other one was following. And then again, eh, on the bottom of this uh, card, you see all has to be done with less time and less space. And that makes uh, a doubles so, so skillful. When are we starting with doubles? And the ones who I last week in the seminar where we are talking about talent development, they saw already this uh, card where you see the development of youngsters from active start to fundamentals and active for life. And over here you see already learning sports skills. So over here, we should start with the sports skills for doubles. And going back to this one, this card, over here I mentioned racket handling, and we will talk about that later, because I think this is a crucial part to learn good doubles. By the way, it's also very good to play singles. You see already in this age group, eh, boys 9 to 11, 12, girls 8 to 11, in this age group, they should start to learn already. And over here, we also see in this age group where we were talking about basic badminton, you see in the mental part, learn to play and learn in a group of players. So over here in this age group, youngsters are able to work together and to go together on court as a double. And then, of course, we should talk about how to start. And I think uh, this is my way of uh, how you should start your doubles. In the first period, in the first phase of starting doubles, already on that very young age, eh, like we see over here, 9 and 11 years, 8 to 11 with the girls, 9 to 11 with the boys. Here you start with record handling. And record handling, for me, that's the skill to play the shuttle in a controlled way around your body. And the second thing what you need to learn in that phase is the service situation. The skill to play low over the net, just behind the service line of the opponent. I wait a moment for phase two and phase three, but racket handling, and I was discussing that already. Um, this is a player and the shuttle is coming close to his body. And then you should be able to play the shuttle back in a controlled way. And over here, I've got some easy examples to do so. One player at the net, one player in the middle. The player at the net is playing down and he is more or less defending. So he's playing from this part, this part. But the feeder at the net can also play, of course, over there or over there or over there. That's what I call racket handling. Able to play the shuttle back to this position in a controlled way. Of course, this is a situation where both players are practicing in the same place, you can change that by moving around left to right. And 
play to one corner or play to the other corner. You can do that also with two players at the net, play and move to the sidelines, but also move forward so they feed shuttles not only in this area and in this area, but also the short ones. So you have to come forward as well. And of course you can uh, make a lot of variations on this one. And especially when you need to learn how to play in the free space. If the skill over here is good, advanced and developed, then of course you should be able to play not to the feeder at the net back, but play to the other side of the court. So instead of playing back, one, two, three, up and play to the other side. And again over here, you get one, two, up and play to the other side, play into the free space. How should you do that? Short grip, racket in your fingers, so a very relaxed grip, elbow away from the body, not your elbow against your body, body your arm needs to move freely, rack it up in front of you, use your underarm and fingers, and relax and squeeze when you hit with your fingers. So it's not a complete arm movement with your shoulder and your upper arm. It's only with your fingers and your underarm. Starting with doubles, so racket handling, that skill, that's what you need. The most important skill I think you need in doubles. And then you need to learn the service situation. And I also have some basic, basic things where I think you need to start with already on that early age, nine, 10, 11 years old. Very simple. You need to learn them, just play in the first, and now I lost, yeah. In this situation, you serve and play straight to the sideline. That's the first thing you need to learn. Or play through the middle. So it's you need to learn the service and you need to learn the service return. The second option is to play not only the short service, but also the high service or the flick service. I'm not uh, telling this to players that it's a flick service. I give them the option to play the short service or to play a high service. And the return on the high service, depending on whether you are in balance or not, is always through the middle. So a clear, a smash, or a drop shot. That's my basic tactic when I start with youngsters to learn them to play doubles. Now, what kind of skills do you need then? then you need, of course, the backhand short service, yeah, like we see over here, service, backhand short, backhand short, backhand short. You also need the backhand high service. It could be a flick service, but I know with those young kids, it's very difficult to do that flick service. So I learned them at least to play a short service, this one, and a high service. They also need to learn the service return, how to do that. Then it comes to racket handling, and that's this one. The shuttle is coming fast to your body, to the side or to your body, and you have to play it back in a controlled way. And that's why I think you need to learn racket handling as early as possible. And of course, in this situation, forehand, drop shot, smash, and clear, clear. Learn this and then start playing. Because this is already in that age group, very, very difficult to learn and to get used to it. So 
going back, the crucial part for me in doubles, starting with racket handling, service situation. After that, I go to defense. Racket skill, skill to play the shuttle, prevent the opponent is making a point. So defense. And then I go to position in the court. So when this is done, and players can control this, then I go to this situation, defense situation, position in the court, racket skill, defense skill, uh, skill to move to the desired defending position in the court in cooperation with your partner. After defense, I go to attack. What kind of attack? That's what we saw already in, uh, in the, another slide, huh? inside, outside, drop shots, smashes, sometimes clears. And of course, the skill to move to the desired attacking position in the court in cooperation with your partner. So starting with doubles, for me, it's over here, this one. Then I go to defense. Then I go to attack. And in that way, I try to learn players playing doubles. But this one is for me the crucial one to start with. Um, now I would like to give the floor to Wojciech Skolacic from Poland. He will take you to, let's say, more advanced tactics. As a former double player, I think he can explain that very well. All right, thank you, Martin, for the introduction. And good afternoon to, to everyone. Um, hope you can you can hear me well. Uh, I prepare some small presentation. I will just wait until Martin will switch off his own. Until my time will switch off his presentation, just uh, I'll let you know that I will keep the order that just we start from a uh, different kind of service situation and some different between doubles uh, and mixed doubles. Uh, then we move to defensive situation and then more to attack situation, the order the same like my time suggest um, to learn. Yeah, but still, my time, can you switch off the <coughs> Yeah. Okay, Christian, can uh, can you give me uh, some directions uh, how to uh, to close my uh, sharing? Stop share. Yes, I've got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. That's good. Now you should see uh, some PDF file with some general information about the first three strokes that, uh, of course, that are very important. And we can see uh, that um, it's small difference between European and Asia that in Europe we are very aware for that one. Uh, yeah, it's we can use it in every rally. So, so, so this is um, sometimes most of, of the used strokes first three strokes because sometimes we can win the rally without smash or defense but we always have to serve and we see uh, and of course there's some statistic that a lot of uh, rallies in the men's double i didn't give any any numbers here because um, there's different in dub, men's double and women's double and also mixed double but we can win a lot of a lot of more than 50 percent of the rallies in first three strokes in the lower level and in the in the higher level, the, the numbers are, are smaller, and, and the rallies are longer. But still, uh, we can uh, we can create some situation more offensive, or we stay more defensive after first uh, first three strokes. So we have uh, this like basic situation for all doubles. 
Um, maybe the, the women's doubles are, and you can see the, the black fits uh, more away from the service line, but in last years we can see they are closer and closer and some, some girls are really close to the, close to the um, service, uh, service line. And then it's some difference between doubles. So we, um, um, we have some draw for doubles and I put the lines uh, with colors in, for different serve and then some direction what, what should do the um, player who serve and the player who is behind in this case. In general, in general advice here just to play short one when we play like red, blue, and uh, let's say yellow, uh, is to move a bit to the front. But the question is when to move. Uh, I, what I saw there a lot of a lot of players maybe they are doing they are waiting for the opponent's stroke, and that's that's the completely wrong. Because if my opponent is playing service return to to the net, then I cannot get it off in offensive situation. So the goal is to to move, make a one step which is following my strokes depend on the direction before my opponent is hitting the shuttle. So when my opponent is hitting the shuttle, I need to be ready in the position. Otherwise I cannot get the strokes or the shuttle really close to the net and of inoffensive situation. So this is the goal just to move from red, blue or yellow just after my serve before my opponent is touching the shuttle. That's the, um, that's the goal. And one for flick serve, the purple one, and this is just to move back. Uh, the service player is moving back to defense in defense uh, in the shortest way, and also uh, more far away from the shuttle because he's the, this player he or she is moving. Uh, so it's better to get the, sh the longest distance to the shuttle, and then the partner in the back needs to move to the left. And of course, one more thing to the really mm, it's not usual but sometimes we play really to the um, to the sideline just to surprise our opponent and in this case the back player needs to move a bit to the to the same direction uh, to be ready for all uh, straight sleep drives push and whatever and uh, just to change uh, change the position this is more obviously of course in this blue and and red the back player needs to move sometimes more to the front one step back depend on the quality of the serve but this is more situation uh, and it's not easy to draw all of this in the, in the small, small graph like this. So hopefully this one is understood, uh, you understood this one and this is more different between doubles and into doubles. So this is maybe more, more complicated. So we have a situation like the woman is on the net and the boy is serving and there's probably there will be some question where should stay the woman on right side on the left side and there's no one answer because now in the top level you can see some different um, routines the player used but in general in my opinion it's easier to stay in front of the of the shuttle after the serve is the shortest to get the shortest way to the shuttle so this this position should be mm, most common but of course the, the woman in this case also can stay on the left side as well but this is um, depend of the depend of the pair. But in general, I I use this part this this, this setting as uh, as on draw. So we have the situation what we, what we have different color, two kinds of short serve like blue and red. And if you if you can see that after the blue serve just on the leg, the woman don't need to do so much because she's already in front of the shuttle, so she can. She can handle the service return, return on just a straight way in front of the in front of her. So she can just adjust a bit the position, just maybe one step closer to the net or one step back, depend on the quality of the serve. Um, red one, just to stay in front, needs to move a bit to the left to stay again in front. Uh, that is, I think, quite clear. And more difficult is what we need to do after purple, just flick more to the center, okay? So because I think, and um, just to, to be clear, this is this, this graph is more for right-handed players. All, all are, all are right-handed players, so just to, to understand. So if we play flick serve to the center, it's not easy from, from here to create the situation for that player 
just to play really to sideline here. It's not easy. So the woman needs to move the on the shortest way. And actually she's out of the play because this player probably needs to will play most of the strokes um, to the center. So this is for, for the boy who served, uh, who served the shuttle. On the other hand, we have sometimes the situation in mixed double that we play to the side, like, like the yellow one. And then the, the flying time is much longer than, uh, than to the center and the player in the net have more time to move back. So then we create situation that the woman's moving away to, the, to that side, sorry. And the boy is moving to the, to the right half of court. And then we, could, then we create situation that the boy is in straight way to the player who can smash if it's a good balance and the woman have more time to, um, to adjust the position and just to, to get the shuttle. So this is, this is more complicated. This is small difference between doubles and uh, mixed, mixed double. Uh, great, and we have one more graph where we can see the place of service return. So what, what is happened after our serve, what the players with black feet, what they can play. So they can play, Straight net, more to the side, more to the side, drive to the uh, drive to the back players who stay behind the service uh, partner on the mixed double. Just drive to the to the to the man and two corners in the, the back. And of course, this one we can use also in single and different is in the mix in the doubles and mixed double. We use also the mid court zone uh, to the to the to the sideline in front next to on the uh, on the side. So this is uh, this these two are not not common for singles for sure. Some some tips to remember uh, for first three stroke is communicate tactic with partner. So this is most important just to let know let know my partner uh, what what I'm going to do with myself and what we need to what we need to do together after because there is not not some there's really. Not so much time, like Martin said, for uh, making decisions. So we should do this more automatically. So we, we need to know what we have to expect from my partner who is serving. And then we just need to set our position uh, depend on, of our tactic. So this is most important just to communicate tactic and then different ways. Some players are just giving some signs what, what they are going to serve. Some players, they just talk together what, what they will do. But at least they need to communicate something to uh, to each other. Stay calm, of course. Stay consistent. This is very important. Uh, create offensive, so we can create this, and then at the end, create offensive situation and look for the winner. That why is at the end? Because of course, like I said, a lot of race can finish in first three strokes. But the most important thing is don't give my opponents to win the rally in first three strokes. Then. If we are consistent, we can create some situation or look for winners. Because if we are looking only for winners, maybe we can win three, four rallies only in first three shots, but then we can lose five or six. So that's why this one, this one is at the end. And hope, uh, hope that the uh, small explanation is clear. And then uh, following the Martai structure, this is defensive situation. So I give only some basic draw without without any lines, but I will explain later why. So we have we have offensive um, after leave or clear. We have shuttle in the in the corner in the rear court, and this is how it should looks in general the defensive uh, setting uh, when we expect when we expect the shuttle. And there's some difference between uh, doubles, of course, uh, women's doubles, men's doubles. And mixed double, but in general, I will just switch to. I will switch to another. Uh, just moment. Uh, just moment. I will show you some. Um, okay, so we have. Um, okay. Hopefully you can see now the uh, graph for uh, the same the same graph for defense, and this is this is like basic situation how we should stay in the defense. 
So one player is on the straightway, bit more far away, and the other one in the crossway, this body position, uh, body needs to be turned in front of the shuttle and one maybe a bit more to the front, just to create the same distance between shuttle and the player, the both players needs to, uh, needs to be the same. The, the, the general thing is to keep the distance between these two players, the distance needs to be the same. So this, just a moment. This one, so it needs to be the same. So if, if this player on straightway move to the left in some situation or player on that player move more to that way, they need to adjust the, uh, the, the, the second one need to adjust the position. So I just tr always try to explain to, to the players, this is looks like defensive um, defense in football. There's not only one player is moving there, all four in the defense in football, they're moving together. So this is the same in, in, in double in defense, in women's double as well. So the distance here needs to be the same all the time. So if one needs to move, the another one needs to adjust the pin um, to first one. So depend on the of the offensive stroke, the players need to adjust the position. And we can see in there's some different. If we put the, mm, I got the message. Just a moment. Uh, I will just to stay in more with doubles. We can we will change the um, position, for example, of the just a moment. Just to show you the different if it's like on the other hand. Again, for right, right hander players. Okay, here and shuttle is over there. So the difference between men's double and women's double. In men's double, the straight player is playing with mostly with the backhand, so it's close to the close to the sideline. In women's double. Sometimes it stay more in the center of the half court. So that's mean the partner needs to adjust the position as well. Because the, for women's double, the angle and the speed is not the same like men's double. So the women's can, the straight player, they can play defense with the forehand grip here. In men's double is almost not possible. So in general, we play with backhand and women's, in women's double, in this side, we play with the forehand. So the setting for the men's double and women's double is a bit different in the defense. And again, there's more, but it's more specific now. In mixed double, of course, in this situation, if the woman is on straightway, she needs to cover more the sideline because the smash is really powerful from, from, the, uh, from the men. So that's, the, but this is the, the, this is general difference between men's and women's double that the setting is a bit different and the women are creating a bit space on the straight line to get the shuttle with the forehand. Uh, instead of men's double, they are playing 90-90% with the 90% uh, with the with the back. All right, and again, I will switch to my uh, PDF presentation. Let's. Okay, now again, we should stay in the, our PDF uh, presentation and then some general uh, tips, just what we should do in the defense, look for empty gaps, control distance between each other. This is what we spoke before, stay in front of the shuttle. So that's why the cross court player is, his body needs to be more turned in front of the shuttle. Uh, keep your racket out in front of the body. And this is the common problem with some players are holding the elbow next to the body and they cannot change the grip then. So this is really important to, to have the racket more in front of the body. 
uh, stay ready for drop and clear most common for women's double and mixed double and and follow the stroke after the defense so the defense is not only the hitting this is the hitting and moving after that's that's very important because we don't have so much time attacking situation that against some grass uh, we have clear situation that the the shuttle is in the in the back again in real court we have the defense um, setting black one uh, like we saw before and this is how we should stay in the attacking so the front court players moving deep to the side uh, of the um, or where on, on the half court where the shuttle is and what is happened now so the this position the net net player position needs to be um, the, the decision is taken in two parts first one is after opponents lift or clear we should move to the side and then after our partner stroke we should decide what we are going to do and this is on the, that graph depend whether again all players are right handed depend where my partner is putting the shuttle then we have to the, the net player needs to adjust the position because if we play smash is straight or in the middle but more to the cross call player we have we have to expect more shuttles around this side that way the net player needs to move to the to the side but the player in front don't know where the where the smash you know, will go so that's why the first decision is just to move here and then depend on the direction um, the strong direction then we have to move if we play in the middle but more for straight player this is this direction is is very easy to perform so that's why net play needs to move to cover cross court reply of course if it's drop shot it's the same direction but closer to the net so this is side and front um, to the side and front uh, move to the side and front as well and this is offensive situation of course sometimes if we are trying to kill the shuttle from the net or um, create some offensive situation so the player in the player in the net is hitting in the uh, with the forehand grip let's say the player in the back needs to adjust the position so needs to move closer thus again to control the distance between the, the space between the players to stay the same just to don't create a gap between between these two players and again there are some tips uh, to to the offensive situation players who is not hitting needs to adjust the position and uh, i don't know why it's not again the, the, the idea is just the player who is not hitting so in this case players in real court needs to adjust position to the player in front court in previous situation Shuttle was in the record, so the net net player needs to adjust the position. There's always two players are moving around the court. There's not only one player is moving around the court. Uh, control the distance between each other is the same like in the defense. Also in offensive situation, we have to control the distance between each other. And when we are hitting, change the pace, change the angle, change the speed, uh, and choose the most difficult um, points. And of course, this last one is in most advanced players where they can put really shuttles with the right direction just they aim not only to the, the, the on the straight they can aim for example uh, right knee left knee chest and different other different position but this is more for high higher level uh having high level players okay that's all for me i try to be as short as possible now i need to switch off my sharing yes you need to switch off your sharing of desktop and we are yes. go to the nishant okay yes so where is nishant oh. so nishant floor is yours yeah yes uh martin and uh, christian thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my views and I really appreciate the uh, wall chart, what he has uh, shared now. Uh, my views are also similar a bit with that. Uh, well, uh, when we move for the doubles, um, there's a main doubles uh, difference between a lot of um, different game style, game patterns, and also it's like um, how to develop the doubles. It's a really difficult situation. When, when, we when we are the spectators, it's really good to see doubles because you can see the good flash fast exchanges and a uh, lot of things uh, are going up. Uh, just a second, so that I can. 
Yeah. Okay. So we all know the uh, difference between uh, men singles, men's doubles, and men uh, women's doubles and women singles. And also, uh, Voltak has really um, uh, explained the mixed doubles and uh, women's doubles really well. But what we need in the doubles as uh, like reflexes, coordination, speed, power, endurance, athleticism, focus, and in my opinion, the most important thing to play doubles is a big strong mindset. And like when we train the youth, or maybe in my opinion, when to start the um, uh, the doubles training for the youth is where you can see that your players are able to play and they're eager to play. So the easiest way to start the doubles is uh, perhaps in my opinion, what I do is I teach them first the wall practice, the wall knock. It's like how to hit the wall. And then some really basic strokes, as Matain has said, that the racket control, of course, uh, flat, fast exchanges and uh, straight, uh, straight exchanges, cross exchanges, and then push and receive, uh, net kills, um, well, attack from the back code and defense as well, of course. But uh, I think, in my opinion, the building a strong mindset is really important. Most of the time when we see the players, they often struggle with a different, different kind of uh, situation. But when we come for the doubles play, so there are many kind of a different patterns or maybe a different a kind of a, a style of a playing, you can see that. There's one style of a play who say that one front and one back. So it's a net player who try to take control of the net and try to dominate from the net all the time. Also, it's a lot of rotational uh, badminton with a lot of power and speed. You can see that uh, Yu Young Sun and uh, Lee Young De, they play really well in this pattern. Also, with the European style of uh, play, when I see that Chris Langridge and Marcus Ellis with a lot of exchanges and really good placement, but a little bit less power and try to vary the more. And also with the left and right hand combination before, because it was a time when I used to play a lot of players, even me, like I played with a lot of left-handed players as my partner because I was right-handed. So that was also one of the style of a player where you can choose what kind of a training you want to give your players to make them a good doubles player. So all of these, uh, uh, the type of a play, I think, um, yeah, it's very useful with the situation. You can use it. Like um, if you feel, okay, somebody's playing with really more rotation, you can switch the pair and the style. And also it's really important for as a coach to understand what kind of game pattern your opponent, your player's opponent they have. So for example, like fixing the pattern is really important. Of course, as we all need that, we all know that service situation return is really good standing precision where to serve, how to return. And then first of all, in my opinion, the doubles, what I believe and what I motivate for the players to play for a more offensive play, more attacking play. And also the most important thing when we develop the partnership pairing, that time coordination is really important. So where to stand, which shuttle you have to go for, what are the strokes which one particular player have to go for when you see where your opponent is. Because the doubles, in my opinion, when you're in a position and play the shot, you have to play against three people, two of your opponent and one is your partner. So you have to play a shot where you can see that it can be, or it, it has to be a good choice for my opponent for the next shot. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, my partner for the next shot, or maybe I have to place a shuttle in a way where I can get more control it. And then how to identify the weaknesses. As uh, Martin has uh, shared the, uh, uh, the weaknesses also, I have something some similar, uh, but yeah. So coming forward, like European and Asian doubles, this is really interesting because when I played against most of the European players as a player, but then when I see it's a lot of different kind of a game. So I think the European players, they more are focusing on placement of the good shot. And also it's like, it's really good in at times and then service return situation, service return and third shot, it's really good first three shot situation with the Europeans. But as Asians, we always uh, try to focus um, like near the net maybe for the receiving. And, and if you look at the Asian style of a badminton, most of the time you will see the return 
most of the time what we have got advised most many of the time is to keep the shuttle quickly near the net after the receiving so that you can get the offense so in the beginning from the beginning as a doubles player um, what i have advised many of the time from my coach is to get the offense to be in a more offense it's like the european body structure and asian body structure is completely different unless there's a, a bit you can say that uh, well in asia and europe both of the time you will see the very tall players but most of the time you will see the asians with a no normal and average height where you can uh, see they're really good with the reflexes and uh, good, good with a good speed also with good uh, uh, attacking play but european style of a badminton as i said is more about uh, more good placement and which is really clever idea at times so it depends it's totally depends upon how your opponent is playing and unless you're getting your point you're scoring the points everything is good as uh, the mixed doubles also in uh, europe is like you can see that women's are also very strong by physique i can say and also um, yeah so a lot of rotational play also at times in uh, european mixed doubles but if you look at the asian doubles so it's more traditional way so the girl will always try to be stand in the front and try to go forward as quick as possible um, but in a in the european style of a double when you look at this all england or maybe many of the tournament you will you will completely see a different kind of a game pattern tactics and game plans compared to the asians and also when we see these kind of differences when we see like a different kind of uh, like a game plans the game plays different kind of a pattern different kind of a tactics also you need it so when you see when you analyze the game if somebody is playing some kind of a, a a pattern of a badminton or in the doubles perhaps you have to think that how i can get out of the situation and try to make myself in a secure um secure place and also to try to score well so at times some players are really good in offense sometimes some players are really good in f flat and fast exchanges so what happens when we face a different different kind of uh, situation if somebody is really good in front and back for example if you look at the kevin sanjaya and gideon they're extremely good in front and back situation when kevin sanjaya is in front he loves to play in the front and he tried to dominate all the way from the front. So what you can do it. So I usually try to um, advise the players that when somebody is really good on the net, the first few shots try to avoid on the net. Or perhaps you can see that, uh, uh, or perhaps you can see that you have to find out some different situation maybe. But in my opinion, when I, this is just in one example, like how you can deal with the different situation. But, when you see somebody is really good in the front and somebody is really good in the back, but at times you are really good in defense. What I advise many of the time not to play front because the front court player is waiting. He wants you to do that all the time. So you have to take out of that player from the game. So that's how one one way to play um, a tactical game. I can say you can use the different tactics. And also when somebody is having a really good rotation, so what to do? In between the rotation, try to break the rotation by placing the shuttle to the right place. Well, this is really important and this is really challenging because at times when the rotation is happening, nowadays players are really strong and quick and they're really agile. So you have a very less time. It means sometimes you blink your eyes and then you, you will see that the shuttle has already passed to you. So in this situation, you have to be very careful and then try to break the rotation because if you can keep lifting all the way like the first situation what i have explained because both of the players will try to come out and try to hit all the way with a good attack so in this situation perhaps you can try to uh, place the shuttle with the different different corners and also it's really important for you to take control for the offense like well, when you go for the next kind of uh, tactic where you can see the Chris and uh, Marcus, how they play, I'm giving just an example. I'm sure there are uh, many also uh, they play like them. But when they play, you see that there's no such a hard smashes. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they try to play the cut drop shot, the half smashes, the stick smashes from the back. And well, this is really surprising because if you look at the Asian type of a double, we have either full smash or drop shot. 
it's like, well, it's not that we can't hit it. It's not like that. But many of the time you see the players from Asia, they try to go for more offense and try to finish the rally as quick as possible because that's how we believe to play in doubles. And when you play the left and right hand combination, so that time you always have to remember where you are playing the shuttle because at times it's it will be really confusing for you uh, to play at the right spot because sometimes, okay, one at a time from the forehand side and the other also, it's the forehand side. So in that situation, be very careful and where you play. So the center is a really good time, a really good place for them to play it. And then in my opinion, if you have these four different kind of a play in front of you, perhaps you also can your, you make your own strategies and try to coach your players. Because I think with the right tactics and with the right strategies, doubles is a game where we have to keep learning. So this game, like if you look at the doubles few years back and if you look at the doubles now, it's completely changed. Like I can see that players now, they are really fast, they're really forward, and then they're really agile. Um, so with the time, how it's getting changed, the the pattern of a play and game of a play, perhaps you also have to um, uh, try to cope up with the latest kind of um, uh, development, what is happening on the world badminton. So, yeah. And then uh, this was uh, like a kind of... A, a sample of my schedule when I was uh, taking care of uh, national team of Maldives. Uh, when I um, made some uh, doubles kind of a plan, I, I have uh, with my um, this presentation. If somebody wanted, uh, perhaps I can uh, share with all of you. But in my opinion, training the mind is the uh, most important thing uh, in the doubles. And if you if you if your mindset is good and if your mindset is really strong, perhaps the doubles is really have a fun and also. It's really great uh, uh, honor to play. So uh, this is it from uh, my side. And I, I really uh, want to thank you for my time and uh, Christian for giving me an opportunity. And uh, yeah, if, if there are any questions. Yeah, can you share, uh, stop sharing your uh, uh, desktop? Yeah. Very nice. So uh, at the moment, we haven't any questions from our audience, but I think there will be. Uh, we, maybe we can provocate some uh, questions. Maybe Martin and Wojciech, you can also make some notice about other presentations. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so, but uh, Martin, I, I would just will ask. So, if you have a question, please uh, press the button, raise your hand, and then I will see this in, in the monitor and I will uh, open the video for you. Yeah, um, yeah I. What, what, what I would uh, like to ask to, uh, to Nissan is um, uh, to um, uh, give a little bit more um, um, of his opinion about uh, the role of, uh, of the girl in the, in the mixed doubles. Um, what I see most of the time, and, and that's what you see as well uh, at the moment, is that uh, in Europe, uh, uh, in mixed doubles, uh, uh, we play more side by side. And um, uh, in Asia, it's still more um the girls at the net um Nissan, what what do you think what the, the the next development will be in asia on this in this in this way uh well if you look at uh, some of the players from asia the women's player they are also as equally competent as a uh, men player um, in the mixed doubles but in my opinion um of course uh, it's really hard to compare the women's power of, um, of a body and a men's power of a body. But if you look at the strongest point of a mixed double is the man, because he have to cover the 70 to 80% of uh, um, the court in, in all the situation. In my opinion, the girls now, uh, they started playing uh, on a really good level. If I compare and if I see uh, some girl players, um, the women players uh, in, in a few of the decades. And also I think now the girls, they're more uh, quick enough on the net because what we expect now uh, for the mixed doubles for the girl to try to cover the both the sides of the net. When I used to play, I still remember that if one side of the net, if my partner is there, so definitely I will go for the other side. 
And then now, if you look at the now female players, they have developed really in a good way. And now they're trying to catch the shuttle right away from the side and also in a really good way in the front. So I think playing in a traditional way, it's uh, good, but also playing sometimes in a rotation, it's also makes sense. It depends upon the um, the tactics and it depends upon the what kind of game plan you have. So in my opinion, definitely the ladies have um, improved a lot of um, 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 lot of badminton um, progression because I think now they are taking more initiatives. Now they are uh, really uh, good in a service return situation, also service return and third shot, trying to anticipate in the front where to place the shot. And also, as I said, trying to cover the whole net. That is really good. And also I want to mention one thing that now, if you look at the ladies doubles also, and also the mixed doubles. So the girls defense is improved really well. So I think uh, the women's are coming equally to the men. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I also have a question for, for Wojciech. Um, uh, from his presentation, I saw that uh, you sometimes uh, step back uh, from the net uh, straight back and sometimes you step back uh, cross. Uh, can you explain it a little bit more? Yes, just a moment. You, you mean the... Mm, I will show the... Moment. I will show... We have... Yeah, just a moment. I will show the um, PDF presentation where we can where we can see that. This is of course uh, yeah mixed double, and then I will mix doubles, and then I will show. Yeah, of course. If we play, um, can you see now or not? Not yet. Not yet. No. Can you one more time? Uh, yeah. Now, now we can see. Yes. 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 Yeah, uh, yeah. This is a lot of a lot of dust. So if you can see the purple one, the the straight uh, straight flick, let's say straight flick because it's easier to to understood uh, from from the ball. So the the um, flying time is much. Uh, there's less time to react for the girl in this situation. So if she can move to the to the to the left. To stay more far from the shuttle, she can. But if we can like more analyze the situation, I don't see any matter just to move because it doesn't matter if she if she move back on straight line or use crossway, which is longer. She's in the same uh, distance from the shuttle, actually, because shuttle is in the center. So in this situation, you prefer um, and uh, the girl to move to the um, to the right side. Yes, to the right side here, around here, because for, yeah. of course it's for right-handed. It's not easy if you are moved back from from the from the line to create good angle to play really hard smash there. So like what I understand to play in the middle. What I understand the principle is to move as less as possible. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And on so the we other have way, a if it's cross, it's obviously to create the situation where the distance from the shuttle is bigger and there is more time to the yellow one to move in the crossway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we have a question from Thomas. Thomas, did, do you hear me? Thank yeah, you. I do. And I hope you hear me too. Yes. Um, just a short question to Martin. It's Thomas from Switzerland, by the way. Um, you were talking about the when to start doubles. And uh, I completely agree with everything you said about racket handling first and some service tactics in the beginning. Wondering is how you introduce the way you move on the doubles courts. I mean, the kids, they need to get used to have someone beside. They need to know what is a defense position side by side, what is an offense position, because I'm struggling sometimes a little bit on how to introduce that. We have one or two methods, but I was just wondering on how you do that usually. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, um, yeah. You um, uh, one of the one of the the, the people who um, uh, one of the yeah one of the coaches who was also in the last seminar came back to me with uh, some some questions on conditioned games, and I think this is uh, this could be um, um, uh, an example of it. Um, for instance, when um, uh, of course eh, you as a coach you can bring in a shuttle high on the back. Yeah, from the side and tell your players, okay, now you have to stand uh, side by side. Um, and also uh, sometimes uh, um, you can bring in the shuttle, not high on the back, but uh, uh, play the shuttle on uh, to the net. And, and then those two players have to do something at the net uh, and stay front and back. Or, um, um, and if they lift, they have to stay side by side. Um, I think we know all those kind of things, but what I think is um, at that young age, eh, you start with racket handling, you start with the service situation, and then you start them or, and they play, just let them play and try to influence them during their playing what to do. Uh, I think it's sometimes too early uh, on that level already that that you say, okay, and now you have to go that way, and now you have to go that way. But of course, there are some, I think, common uh, exercises. Is that uh, is that enough to, to answer your question? Okay, so you prefer, the, yeah. yeah, okay, you prefer the tactical game approach, which yeah. is, uh, which is exactly. nice, and uh, I completely agree. Um, yeah, it's just sometimes hard to break it all down to very simple and understandable instructions. So when it's time to go back, when it's time to go to the net, but um, yeah. yeah, I completely agree, but it is sometimes okay. a bit tricky. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, we have also a question from uh, Samir, please. Um, okay, hi. Uh, hi, I'm Samir from India. Uh, I have a question for uh, all three of the coaches. If anyone can answer, that would be great. Uh, so what usually happens and what uh, we see sometimes when players are playing doubles in our academy, uh, they find it very hard. If, so if the player is attacking from the backcourt and he's hitting continuous smashes. And uh, m my question is that when, when can the back player give a cue to the, to the front player to rotate because obviously if the back player is hitting smashes with full intensity it sometimes becomes uh, tricky to give the front player a cue to rotate so when when do we do that rotation okay anyone can answer <laughs> Martin. okay let's let's uh, for me it's very simple the back player is okay. not deciding the the net player is deciding Okay. The net player should be aware of, uh, let's say, the direction, the height, but also the depth of the shuttle in the court. So okay. when the shuttle is coming, uh, let's say, in front of the, the first uh, back line, then there is a possibility to follow up after the smash to go to the net and put pressure on the net. So yep. already when the shuttle is going over you as a net player, then you know or you need to know already uh, that you have to go back in that situation. Yeah. So yeah. not the back player is deciding, the net player is deciding. Okay, okay. And uh, what is your opinion, uh, Nishant coach? Uh, I think in my opinion, uh, uh, at times the situation comes with a different uh, situation. So uh, if I can see that uh, sometimes you're playing with a new partner or maybe sometimes you're playing with amateur partner. So perhaps um, if I'm playing at the back, I will give the front player the call to come out, come back. So I have to go front. For example, if if I'm keep hitting and then they keep lifting it, at sometimes I feel it li it's a little bit stress for me and I can't handle it anymore. So perhaps I will try to play a quick drop shot in the center and try to go in the front and rotate the yeah. strike. So yeah. I can go and I can reach the front and try to recover myself and focus in the front. Also, as Martina yeah. said, you can uh, make uh, clockwise or maybe anti-clockwise rotation by driving in between. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that is also one of the um, uh, options you can do it. Or maybe you can sometimes 
um, you can, it's like, for example, if you are stuck on the foreign backside, then perhaps you, if you play the cross drop shot, so the front player can go at the back and then you can yeah. go in the front again. So yeah. well, there are a lot of uh, diff different situations. I can advise you to uh, watch some matches and you can uh, get the solutions. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I have, I have one last doubt. Uh, my, my last question is that how can we use a clear stroke in doubles and how, how can it be used tactically in, in a match? Wojciech, I think this is your, uh, your turn now to answer. Yeah. Wojciech, Ulmat, please. Can, can you ask one more time? Sorry, because I have some problem with connections. Uh, yeah, my, my question is, how can you use a clear shot while playing a doubles game? And how can it be used uh, tactically uh, during a match? Clear. Yeah, when, when can we use a clear shot during a doubles match? Uh, women's double, always. <laughs> No, okay. just kidding. like man's double. <laughs> uh, in some in, no, but you can see uh, this is like uh, Nishan said that the women's double is more aggressive, so they, they are used more smash and even jump smash. So we cannot, we okay. are not seeing so so much clear as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. In men's double, in general, we are not used so many so many clears. Of mm -hmm. course, sometimes if you just want to survive in in some difficult situation, we just play high. Uh, high clear if we are in the back of the court, out of the balance, if you can see like both players are close to the net and they create the mm -hmm. pressure, then we can play um, then we can play some um, some clear but yep. I cannot see any reason to play really clear if, if we are in the right position, in the balance uh, to to win the win the rally yep. Yep. Okay. In thank you because it's used to, to play against the, against the girls yeah, yeah. Maybe Absolutely. on a junior level, you can play the clears under 15, yeah. under 15. There you can. Yeah. As, as, yeah. as much as the level is lower, then you, you should compare you can to do it. I played like women's double. Yes. Uh, men's, men's double in the, in the junior or under 70 level is like more, more or less similar to, to the, yeah. say, with the stroke to the women's double. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a question from YouTube channel. So, uh, Ivan Puziak, uh, I have a question for all of you. All of you. Can anybody give me uh, your opinion about doubles mix? When is the right time for specialization? The right time to what? For special specialization. Okay. Yeah. Specialization. Oh, okay. Oh. So, who is ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, I saw that question already. So. I think you can see my screen now. Um, over here, I told you that you have to learn sports skills. So over here, you are learning racket handling. And then you go on and on. And over here, you say, OK, individual specific badminton skills. That's what you do over here. Over here, you will see who is able to, um, to has the right uh, quickness in racket handling, who is maybe not able to run the diagonal in singles or is always too late to run that diagonal. So in this age group over here, so between, let's say, 16, over 16, over 15 with the girls, you decide to specialize for singles or for doubles. I have to... Um, add to this that this is, let's say, a Western European model. Uh, I see in other parts of the world, uh, for instance, when I go to South America, this age is a little bit younger. It can be one and one and a half year younger. And I also see sometimes in Asian countries, this already younger. But it's specialism is not starting at, at 10. It's starting when you, uh, let's say, uh, have your second growth spurt done. Okay. Yes, there was a, something similar in the uh, chat group from this seminar, but I think it was, uh, yes, it was answered. It was the, uh, the question from uh, Krasimir Krastev from, uh, from Bulgaria. Yeah, I think we, we answered that question now. Because it's something similar. Yeah. So, no other rise at hands. 
Oh no, we have a rock theme. A rock from so. So, rock, do, do you hear me? Uh, yes. Nice. Do, do you see me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I have a question for all of all of the coaches. What about um, choosing the partner? How much is the role of the coach in uh, in different age groups? What do, what is your opinion about that? Wojciech, you can start. I think I you had to choose. You had to choose partners. <laughs> uh, what's the what's the coach role in different in different different age? Uh, in general, I, what, what I can see, I, I can see that we are really mm, think that we should give a lot of instruction instruction to the players, including the young one. But I think we depend of the group, of course. But we should we should believe to the players. So everyone is different. So first of all, just believe believe the players and see if they can handle the problem. I don't know if I'm answering you, your question exactly because it's not easy to say. Uh, what is the role? You, we cannot say this in, per, in like any percent. What's the what's the role of the question? So you should be kind of the leader, and you should you should know which group you have. So you should give them mm, as much as they can do, and they see if they can if they can handle. Don't start with the instruction. Okay. This is what you mean, or is not not really what you mean? No, I I, I meant how. How much is the role of the coach by choosing the partners? Like you were a player. Ah, player. I didn't hear the partners. I mean the role of the coach yeah. in a, by choosing the partners. Okay, yes. this is I didn't hear, hear this one. Um, I think well, this is hard to say because in my way we always most of the time we just uh, uh, fix the fix the doubles like let's say 60, 70 percent by own and. I don't know. It's hard to, for me. For me, it's uh, hard to say what's the uh, role of the coach to choosing choosing the partner. Of course, coaches have some like perspective, and they can see um, which connections are could be the best. But anyway, they 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 have to try as much as they as they as they can. Sometimes we can think that some connections will not work, but they are working in this case. So try as much as possible, and then make some final decision because otherwise uh, someone needs to be responsible for that not players okay thank you any yeah, other uh, comments from coaches yeah i have a comment on this um, in my opinion how to choose the partnership is the most uh, challenging job for the coach because some partnership you see that it happens uh, because of the players and their understanding with the other players but also when you see that somebody is really good with the skills and um, when you see the equal capable player, so then it's really easy for you to choose a partnership. In my opinion, how I will choose the partners is the one who can take the pressure in a tight situation. I will see the exact the other player who can match with him with that situation. And then I will make them a partner. Also, this is like I can say that mentally, but technically I will see one front player and I will see one back player. So that it will be more easy for me to play the doubles. But as I said, that um, you have to find out the right player to play in the right situation. Because many players, you, I think we all are the badminton coaches can see this. Many players that play really good in the tournament, but they somehow couldn't try to perform in practice. But there are some players who play really good in practice. But then they can't handle the pressure in the tournament. So you have to think and you have to choose the best one. So you see your group and you choose the best one and try to develop them. That's what uh, I can say. Because in the end, you cannot make everybody champion. You have to choose the best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Martin, you also will make some comments or not? Yeah, I, I can make some comments. For me, it's uh, for me, it's uh, the uh, the most important part is cooperation. When players can cooperate with each other, then um, they could uh, have a good uh, partnership. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to make a good double when they don't want to cooperate. 
Um, and of course, when you have the, the luxury situation that you can choose among a lot of players, uh, like in a lot of, uh, I think, Asian countries, then um, this is, uh, 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 then it's quite, yeah, maybe not easy, but it's not so difficult. Then you look at uh, first of cooperation and then you look to uh, uh, complementary skills. Um, and um, if they are complementary to each other, then you could make already uh, quite a good, uh, a good double, a double team. But if you uh, don't have uh, that uh, luxury position, I think um, the most important um, uh, part of getting a good doubles is the, um, um, the will to cooperate with each other. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Martin, do you remember the question from YouTube of uh, Ivan Puziak? No. Uh, about the specialization. So he wants to concretize, it's the same for single and double, it's the same time between 15 and 18. Yeah, in, in, I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll share uh, again. Um, it, this is what, what I showed and I said, okay, over here in this period, you, uh, you want to um, make the decision on doubles and singles. Yes, if you decide over here to go for singles, then uh, or to go for doubles, then you also decide for players they go for doubles. Um, I do that that late because to me it's very uh, good for doubles players also to practice from here to this period in this age group also singles because then they still need to learn or they must play and they must exercise also the, the, long, the long run on the court. And that's what I want to see because it helps them to, um, uh, to develop also to be fast in doubles. Uh, it's the other way around, exactly the same for singles players. If they start to learn over here also racket handling, they have profit with that when they specialize from here in singles. So most of the time in this period, I go for um, players and they play still two, uh, two events. Uh, and for some of them, the main event is singles and they do doubles also. And the others are playing doubles and do a little bit singles. When they get older over here, uh, like uh, 19 plus or 20, something like that. Then I decide to go for one event, but then we are on, let's say, um, world-class level. Thank you. So at the moment we have not any other questions and rise at hands. So, uh, but I can remind that there is not only time for questions. You can also, every of our uh, group can make some notice or comments. Uh, you are welcome. So, but there is no many questions now. Uh, maybe Martin, we can promise that it's, it was not the last seminar, that we will find uh, another, uh, another team uh, as well. And uh, we will announce maybe tomorrow, maybe after the Easter. And uh, yes, and the people ask there about the presentations. Yes, we will collect all presentations together like, like uh, last week, and we'll send out tomorrow morning that uh, we have your email addresses and we will reply to them. So, can I ask a question to yes. uh, Martin and Voltec? Yeah. So, how's the uh, how's your opinion about uh, the the receiving precision for a player? Like when somebody is receiving the serve, so when they come forward and play the stroke, if we are right-handed. We usually stay with the left leg in the front and then we receive. What kind of uh, uh, move you're expecting from a receiver when they receive? Like I've seen many people, they take the right leg front and switch and receive, or maybe with the same leg, you can switch and receive. What is your take on this? Wojciech? 
So you you mean if they you if mean they receive they, if they receive are you ready? You should move like le, le, right hander. You should move with left leg to the front or move right. I think there's a bad connection. Do you hear me? I think there's a bad connection. Can't hear anymore. Martin, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Nissan, can you can you hear me? Um, it's really breaking. Martin, can you ask? Can you uh, once more time uh, ask the same question for Wojciech? Uh, Wojciech, the, the question was that um, uh, uh, receiving the um, uh, the servers in doubles, uh, right-handed player. Uh, normally, you are standing with uh, your left uh, uh, foot in front. Uh, what's the first movement? Uh, depend where where it stay, where where the player stay. I mean, if it's close, if it's on service close line, to the uh, close yeah, to the close, line, eh? yeah, close to the line. Then generally use left left leg, which is uh, faster, yeah. and it's easier to be ready for just fast reply, because then we, we easily can control the body balance. Yeah. Uh, if you are more far away from the um, from the service line, we have to use right leg because the distance is too big. Uh, but this maybe is in more most common in let's say women's double on the high level and in lower level like 70 or 16 years old players. Yeah. In men's double it can happen as well. But in top level, uh, if you if if the player is able to stay in the service line, of course it's left leg because it's yeah, easier to control the balance and reply for the some fast answers and keep yeah. your keep your right. Yeah. Also from uh, for the uh, returning a flick service, of course. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think Nissan is uh, is not anymore there, uh, uh, Christians. Yes, we must invite him back. So, but I have one more question from uh, YouTube uh, chat. Question for Wojciech. Uh Somebody who defend straight smash stay with the left and right legs in an equal position or same leg stay in the bit of in front. A little bit explanation more. Do you understand my question? Yes. Mm, just I will prefer some. To be Thank you, Ivan, for questions about. Just this moment, I will put um, the graph with double defense. Uh, just moment. Okay. So I will share my screen. Okay, uh, so we can have uh, we have the you mean the situation is straight smash? Can you read one more time? I will adjust the position of the uh, <clears throat> somebody who defend straight smash stay with left and right legs in the equal position or same leg stay a bit in front. So you mean if the two legs needs to be like that, like that? If we if we um, defend the straight straight defense or one more in front? That's that's the question exactly. Yeah. Uh, if we, um, I think more or less depend on the play. We can see some uh, some difference more if this right hander more or that side. Yeah, let's say it's like that. We can move. So if it's right hand there, sometimes we can see something uh, like this. So right feet is more in the back to create some space for um, here for backswing if you use the um, backhand defense. But in general, we have to remember that when we get the drop shot, so we can see this this position more in the uh, Asia players. So the, the difference is very big, but they are really strong with the legs. So they can easily get for some, some drop shots. But then we have we can also in Europe we are in general we are tall and we are more dynamic we can get it but the difference is that we are looking for the chance to play to the net the Asia in general they play again lift from that position because there is less control if you make like one big lunge to, to control the shuttle to the uh, with with right feet because there is in general there's only one uh, I will, something like one big lunge so from that position is easier to control the net. If I'm answering the question, so 
you can see I think yes here. I think yes here, here is more to create the space for backswing for for the hard drive defense or something like this from that position is more for block and then follow and get the control in the net if you are too much like that then we we are not maybe not able but it's more difficult to control the shuttle just block the shuttle to the net so depend on there is no like one is good and the other is bad but we we have to know uh, we have to know the, the, the different between this uh, these two two kind of playing defense of course there's not always in one line i think the the right one maybe is a bit uh, deeper but in Asia player, they are more really more like that because they want to play a lot of backhand drive defense. Uh, they, they use more like drive and hype defense. We, we, this one is more easy to control the block defense and then follow shuttle to the net. Okay. So we are not receiving uh, any new questions, only uh, uh, good, uh, good remarks from uh, Samir. Thank you for all coaches for the wonderful session. And we are spent uh, one hour and a half, exactly as we estimate. Thank you very much, all coaches. Maybe you have some additional notice. Or just thank you very much for attention. OK. OK. Thank you. And uh, we will send out uh, uh, tomorrow information and uh, about maybe potential new uh, uh, seminars. And see you in next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.